The Museum Job by James L. Sutter Illustration by Alberto Dal Lago I, Seth, crept through the empty museum, footsteps soundless on the tiled floor. All around the android, monsters loomed, alien creatures propped up in glass-walled display cases, their exhibits pumped full of inert gas to prevent the corpse's decay. In the dim emergency lighting, some of them almost looked alive. But of course, that wasn't how places like this worked. Isef paused at the entrance to their destination. Pulling the tube from their belt, they blew a soft puff of dust through the doorway. Lasers lit up red, crisscrossing the small room. Isef made a mental map of their locations, burning them into short-term memory, even as the dust drifted to the floor and they disappeared again. Bending low, Isef slithered beneath the first laser then arched high over the second. Of course, the android's cloaking field could bend lasers without breaking them, the same way it was currently foiling the thermal imaging cameras, and would have beaten the visual spectrum cameras if ICEF hadn't already hacked them to loop the footage. But ICEF had a certain level of professional pride, and laser tripwires were novice stuff, the sort of thing you put in because it looked impressive to clients, not because it deterred professionals. Dancing around them was so easy it was almost insulting. But of course the museum's security couldn't have known whom they'd be dealing with. The crystal stood alone atop a display pedestal, glowing softly. Inside its cylindrical viewing case, it balanced incongruously on a single metal point, its lower half an elaborate setting of wires and circuitry. Rerouting the Arcano electric security seal on the case itself was more of a challenge but still too easy for someone of ICEF's skill. The android added the appropriate relays, synced them, and popped the case free. With nothing left between ICEF and the crystal, the android considered the pedestal's pressure sensor. It was a classic mechanism, the sort of thing you saw everywhere from ancient temples to modern bank vaults, yet still remarkably difficult to deal with. The era when you could just swap in a similarly sized rock as you snatched away the treasure, was long gone, if it had ever truly existed. Isef knew the right tool for the job, a specialized lifter and pump mechanism that you anchored outside the pressure sensor, then attached to your target. The pump drew up liquid from a reservoir in the anchor, inflating a sack atop the sensor at the exact same rate as the crane arm lifted the prize free, making sure the weight remained constant. But it was expensive, and by necessity single use. ICEF couldn't be expected to have one on hand. It was a perfectly reasonable test to fail, yet something about it stuck in ICEF's craw. It was just so pedestrian. If a glint at the crystal's base caught their eye, there, a single metal flake, its color slightly off from its surroundings. ICEF smiled. A magnetic proximity alarm. Electromagnetic sensors inside the pedestal would be calibrated to the alloy of that tag, sensing its exact composition and distance. Move it, and you'd disrupt the invisible magnetic fields and trigger the alarm. And ICEF almost hadn't seen it. Here, at last, was some quality security work. Getting past it would require time and finesse. ICEF snatched the crystal off its pedestal. Alarms blared accompanied by the clangs of security gates slamming down across exits throughout the museum. ICEF dropped their cloaking field, briefly considered waving to the thermal cameras, then sprinted back through the exhibits. Security guards came rushing through the main entrance just as ICEF neared it. Two humans, a Yusoki and a full half-dozen humanoid security bots, all positioned between the android and the exit. They didn't even give a warning just opened fire with arc emitters and pulse casters, the air humming and crackling with electricity. Well, that isn't very professional. ICEF dove for shelter behind an exhibit featuring some sort of star-nosed lizard. The android drew their own pistol and leaned out to return fire, winging one of the humans. It was tempting to keep firing, to show them all just who they were dealing with, but nine was probably too many, even for ICEF, and besides, the android had promised only enough combat to sell it, which meant it was time for the hard part. This 
is going to hurt. Wincing in anticipation, Isef slipped the crystal into an armored pouch, then stood and darted around the corner, straight for one of the patrol bots. The blast caught Isef full in the chest, sending them sprawling as electricity overloaded circuits and set muscles twitching. Someone kicked the gun from Isef's hand, and then the android was staring up at a circle of angry faces and mirrored robotic lenses. The human Isef had shot clutched at his injured shoulder. An android? He snarled. I'd have thought one of you half-bots would be too smart to try stealing from the Galactic Heritage Foundation. He patted Isef down roughly, eyebrows rising as he pulled the crystal from its case. The Songstone. You've got a good eye for a thief. I'm not the thief here. Isef pointed at the Songstone. That crystal stores the psychic memories of the Peronisi tribes going back a thousand generations. Their whole culture is in there. It doesn't belong in a museum. That's exactly why it belongs in a museum. The guard snapped. That kind of history is too valuable to leave on some backwater world. Besides, they obviously couldn't protect it. No. I, Seth, acknowledged with a nod. But they could hire somebody to get it back. The guard smirked. And look how well that went. I, Seth, matched his smile. I don't know. I think it's going pretty well. The Yaisuki guard wrinkled her snout. How do you figure? As if on cue, the six security bots swiveled in unison, pointing their weapons at the guards. Over the museum's intercom, a familiar voice said, Weapons down, please. What? The lead guard gaped, pistol hanging loose, as he stared down the barrels of his robot's arc emitters. You didn't really think I tripped your alarm by accident, did you? I, Seth, stood, shaking out the last pins and needles of the stun bolt. The android reached out and plucked the crystal from the guard's grip. I just needed to lure you all away from the security station long enough for the others to get in there and work their magic. The intercom clicked on once more, ringing with Rhea's smooth tones. The museum is now closed, she announced. All jewel thieves. Please proceed to the nearest exit.